And there we are, we should now be recording. This is the 13th session of our Dungeon World campaign. Perhaps the penultimate session, we shall find out. Last session, our heroes tra uh, travelled through the flooded underroad to the lair of the Underkin, a sort of psionically empowered race of outcast dwarves who they discovered were the driving force behind the efforts to prop the deceased Galen up as this figurehead of faith, their aim being to channel that faith using the statues, which thankfully our heroes have mostly destroyed, into this ritual to transform them into gods. As they progressed through this ruined temple of the Underkin, they discovered that in actuality all of these dwarves were all part of this large sort of disembodied brain known as the Thinker. Sanya, perhaps unwisely, attempted to like project his consciousness into the brain to find out more about it and converse with it more fully, which unfortunately for him coincided with like Glog deciding to attack the brain and destroy it as a clear and present threat. The brain, obviously perceiving this threat, the thinker then decided, oh well, since there's a connection between me and Sanya, I'll jump ship into his body and I'll hightail it away. So as Sanya's psyche is retreating into a sort of psychic trauma effectively because unfortunately we've not got Lloyd with us tonight and he, he's effectively mentally comatose inside this large brain his body still empowered with the tattoos that give him his power but now controlled by the psyche of the thinker has rallied Sanya's dragon mount and has flown off in an easterly direction Milo believing that he was heading towards the Black Forest, has shapeshifted and flown after him, attempting to give chase. Meanwhile, down on the ground, we have Corinth, Glog, and Durkir in the ruins of this temple, when from the flooded underroad, perhaps coming from the Snow Main Fortress, this tide of dangling, rotting flesh, pustulant undead dwarves has begun to surge forth out of the flooded underroad perhaps the zombified remnants of the snow main defenders of their mountain fortress who were all killed by something horrible dark and evil inside their fortress so i'm gonna ask each of the players to introduce themselves say a bit about their characters and maybe what their characters are thinking at this precise moment in time so i'm going to start with jason introduce yourself and say a bit about your character Hello, so my name is Jason, I'm playing Dirk here, Hammerfall, who's gone through a bit of an identity crisis in terms of his clan. At the moment, um, he seems to, well, he seems to feel like he's the most sane character in the room at the moment because everyone around him appears to be acting very strange. One of them is hacking this brain to bits, this um, supposedly Sanya inside this brain, but Dirk here knows that's not really the case. He knows that... Um, that there's something else afoot, he just doesn't know quite what it is. Uh, he's been sort of intending to help Sanya um, up to this point, but by the sounds of it, they've now become separated from this brain, um, or something to that degree. He knows that something is moving away um, on this uh, on this dragon. Um, so he's quite kind of confused at the moment and startled. Obviously he wants to get rid of this brain, but at the same time he knows it's very fragile. Okay, thank you very much. We'll now move on to Rob. If you can introduce yourself and say a bit about your character, please. Sure. I'm playing Glarg. He's a barbarian from the frozen nation of Snowcrest. So his he wants to uh, do battles that uh, against big, dangerous enemies, enemies that threaten places, um, because this allows him to gain sort of prestige within his tribe when he goes back. Uh, as to what he's thinking now, he's kind of accomplished what he wanted to set out to accomplish when he came to this area, but he's caught up now in this plot that he doesn't fully understand. He knows that there's a really, really bad, bad thing that could happen. And so he's more caught up in getting that done than thinking about the hows or whys of it. And he's probably thinking a little bit about how he can spin this when he gets back to his tribe to be the biggest thing of all. Thank you very much. And now we come on to Matthew. Matthew, if you can introduce yourself and say a bit about your character, please. Howdy-ho. I am playing Corinth Fenry, the half-elven ranger. 
who is still quite a new addition to this group, and they've told him a lot of tall tales about statues and necromancers, and the land is sick. Which is all quite a lot to take in. Corinth is mainly interested in bringing the people who have destroyed his village to justice and showing that they don't go unpunished for what they've done. Still not entirely convinced that these dwarfs are not for Gatlin, like the others he's met recently when we were subdued. So he's kind of suspicious of dwarven kind for the moment, and that may continue in the future. He's grown fond of Milo Thistle, though. He seems a friend of nature. They share a bond, one could say. He's relishing this, ch this new challenge and is looking forward to escaping their current predicament. Thank you very much. And last but by no means least, we have Dennis. If you can introduce yourself and say a bit about your character. My name is Dennis, and I play Milo Thistle. They're supposedly a very young halfling who is also a druid. Um, he was asked to leave the great forest, the black forest, because he was too curious. And um, now he's starting to doubt that, uh, or to think that his curiosity might not have led him into the best places, because this adventuring life might not be for him. Okay, and we pick up directly where we left off with Milo Thistle. Milo, dis describe the animal form you're in, describe how it currently appears. It is a. Uh, it's not a gust of wind, but it's a it's an air elemental, uh, going very fast, um, trying to catch up with the the thinker and um, the little dragon that I forgot the name of. Tooth something. Mm -hmm. um, so it's basically just uh, a slightly different, most maybe more solid gust of wind than all the rest of the gust of wind around okay so as you're soaring through the air you can see the thinker inside sanya's body sat on the back of this this wormling this white wormling that you know sanya had established this sort of mental connection with and he'd been using as a mount you can see that he's heading away to the east and as you sort of with your senses now attuned to the air as you sort of look far into the east in the direction where the the black forest lies you can just see a, a sort of haze of dark smoke starting to to rise up into the air far in the distance you hear a cry from the thinker as he kicks his heels into this draconic mount urging it to fly ever faster to the east what do you do <sighs> He will keep his his eye focus, his concentration solely on the on the thinker. Um, okay. As he's just trying to reach, he's trying to gain on on the on the mount, um, and he knows he has to he has short time before Sanya is uh, is cut from the psychic connection, and might be. Capture, captured in a in a giant brain that his good friend Clark will make a paste out of. So he will focus and concentrate on the elemental matter around him and shoot out some whirlwinds to try to slow the dragon down, so he can get gain some. Uh, Okay, that sounds like a volley-based attack to me, so if you want to make a roll plus dex. I can try. I have seven on the die, and I might have plus one on dex, so that's eight. Okay. Yes, eight. So, you're going, you're going to potentially deal damage if you wish, or slow it down. However, you also have to choose one of the following. You have to either move to get the shot, placing you in a danger of the germ's choice. You have to take what you can get and you do less damage. Or you have to take several shots, which normally would reduce your ammo by one. But I'll say in this case, it'll effectively just mean you'll have to spend like a point of your hold because you're actually sapping like 
the air that's making up your elemental body. Okay. <clears throat> but can I use it instead of causing damage to slow it down? Yeah. To... Yeah, you've achieved your aim. There's, okay. You just have to pick one of these other sort of side effects. Uh, okay, I'll spend a hole then. Okay, not a problem. So describe how you summon these winds, you, you gust forth these winds around the dragon and what effect it has on it. You have succeeded. So he, <clears throat> the elemental is flying um, and kind of becomes more lean, like when the, the gravity and the air stretches it out and it shoots out ice propellant, kind of like it draws in from the the moisture in the air around it freezes it shoots it off and when it comes close to the dragon it kind of like air bursts and causing these turmoils in indeed the, in as the it creates it. turbulence around you see the dragon sort of like veering a little bit as it's struggling to keep itself right you also notice that a sort of thin layer of frost starts to connect on the membranes of its wings making it sort of flapping motion a lot slower and it starts to steadily lose height as you watch, you see the thinker still in the body of Sanya literally just like tears off the the, the sort of jerkin that Sanya is wearing. And you see now, for once, fully unveiled, because obviously Sanya normally keeps himself fairly covered up. You can see these tattoos all over him, obviously reflecting in his now bright red beard. These tattoos are glowing with this sort of angry, dull red colour, like some burning embers. You can see him looking around, sort of craning his head around on the back of his dragon, but he doesn't seem to have spotted you yet. Okay. <clears throat> if I can reach enough, I will jump up on the dragon behind him, and I will i will not drop my shape, but I will make it appear more halfling-like, so kind of like a halfling made of air. Okay, yeah, given the fact you succeeded on your previous roll and you've slowed it down, I'm going to say you don't have to make a roll to catch up with it. You've basically drawn a level with it so you could get onto the back of this, like, dragon creature. Okay. So he will, <clears throat> he will, he will say, <clears throat> We need to talk. This, this, is, this is not good, what you're doing. The thinker sort of like now being able to see you as you've sort of solidified your shape a little bit and made it a bit easier to see. He turns around, you see he's sort of like looking down at his hands, this sort of like pulsating light running through the tattoos on Sanyo's body, and almost as though he's talking to himself rather than you, he looks at his arms and he goes, So much power in such a small frame. I wonder if your friend knows what he is truly capable of. And as he says that, he holds out his hand. And what appears to be a large blade of fire springs forth from his hand. What do you do? I think Milo's mind is kind of like fire, air. He has nothing to fear. So he, he's just <clears throat> inching towards him. Look! They will end it down on the ground if it, we can. He looks up, sort of interrupting you as though he's like he's noticed you for the first time. There's, there's a an unaccustomed expression of like cruelty and sort of derision on Sanya's once all too familiar face, as though almost as though you're like you're beneath his notice. It's not an expression you're used to seeing Sanya. You've seen him infuriated, annoyed maybe even scared and angry a few times, but you've never seen such a cruel expression set on his face. He looks at you and he says, so they they will deal with whatever is going on on the ground, and by the time they have, I will be far, far away from here, and it will be too late for them to do anything to stop me. No, you misunderstand. They will sever the connection. If they sever the connection, I have to deal with you. If they sever the connection, then whatever remains of your friend will be stuck where he is. And I, I know. Will, and I will be in this splendidly powerful body. And then I will deal with you. But there's a way out. 
he, he, he sort of laughs like dismissively when you say, oh, I'm going to have to deal with you. He's like, yeah, whatever. And then we say that there's a way out. He says, I do find your talk at least entertaining. What is it that you're suggesting? Well, if you truly are the big thinker, you will realize this plan is not going to get you anywhere. You're the, what remains of your kind, the underkin. You have obligation in that. At which point he, he just throws his head back and laughs and says, I see you do. You still do not understand. There are no underkin. There is only the thinker. And at that point, we're going to cut back to everyone on the ground. Okay, so guys on the ground, these the underroad has almost sort of disgorged this huge horde of these dwarves. They're shambling forward slowly, sort of like sloshing through this swamp water that's about up to up to the knees of a normal person, so obviously up to their waist. You can see that like most of them have horrible sort of claw marks and like mortal wounds over them. Their eyes are vacant, their mouths hang open. They're, they're not even like wielding weapons and the armor they've got on is like torn to shreds. But they appear to be like shambling slowly forward towards you. Some of them emit a low groan as they move. Um, the room we're in and like a hallway, can you can you give me a little description there? Basically, I want to look for kind of like a choke point, a bottleneck where I can... Yeah, it's, you're effectively in a large circular chamber which has this brain pool at the center. Right? There's only one sort of like double width archway that leads into this chamber and they're sort of like shambling towards this archway all right so i'm gonna position myself so they gotta kind of you know come through the archway one at a time and i got my big ass sword ready okay no problems so you moved into the doorway to sort of block them from getting any further mm. into the chamber yeah if, if there's anything i can drag any piece of anything I could use to partially block, like so they can't kind of come in and try and duck to the side, I'll drag that over too. You know what I mean? Yeah, not a problem. There's a few bits of sort of like smashed masonry and furniture in here, and being the, the big, perfect, but burly sort of guy you are, I'm not going to ask you to make a roll or anything like that. You, you just grab like a, a huge like block of stone and just like heave it in the way. All right, so I got a little short, tiny hallway they got to come through now. Excellent. Indeed. Okay, what's Corinth doing at this point in time? You see Glogs haul this big stone block in the way, and he's sort of behind it with his sword, ready to like deliver his own particular brand of justice to this advancing undead horde. Uh, as far as we know, we're in a sealed room with a giant brain. That's correct. You can still see the brain behind you, although it's, it's looking it, it a bit, largely, a bit, largely destroyed. Yeah, yeah. It, it's mm. looking, it's looking a bit sort of crispy, and like several hunks of it have been like hacked off by Glog. Um, well, first thing Corinth will do, he'll, he'll speak quickly to his bird, his owl, um, bird. Sigmund, Sigmund, who looks at you. Hello, little Matthew. <laughs> and instruct him to search out his companions and to report back where they are to try and get an idea of where everyone is. As we're sort of trapped in this room and hopefully he can get out there and find them. So, so who is it you actually want him to be looking for? Um, Milo, because he, he, he believes, he's not entirely sure, but he believes that Milo shares a bond with nature due to his stone talking and, his, and his, the way that he acts. He might be able to understand Sigmund's intention. Okay, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to ask you if you can make me a defy danger roll for your... <laughs> Your bird. Oh no! You can use your own dex modifiers, 2d6 plus your dex modifiers. So obviously it's got to oh, fly goody. over all these like zombies. That's great. Yeah, so that's 8 plus 3, uh, 11. Okay, so this owl takes off of your shoulder, sort of swoops down low over Glog, heads out into the corridor. As it goes across over the top of a few of these zombies, they're like... Mm, sort of like reaching up to try and like, claw at it. And that instance, I'll, I'll start um, getting my boar ready. Yeah, not a problem. I'm assuming not you're doing problem. the old, um, you know, like stick some arrows in the ground. Yeah. So you start... <laughs> not a problem. You start doing that. You're sort of next to Glog. What about Durkir? All of a, we all of a whetstone. Yeah. So um, Durkir has sort of been looking at this horde for some time, and he's been feeling um, a bit of despair coming to him. He looks back at the brain, and um, his main um, want now is to 
try, if possible, to save um, Sanya from that thing, he suddenly remembers something that he learned a while ago or had heard of um, and starts sort of um, patting his pockets down and starts looking to the others thinking, gem, I need a gem. Has anyone got a gem? I believe I do have like some low value gems. I don't I care what value they are. It needs to be gem. So be a gem. in that case, I'm just going to take my the purse off my belt. I'm I'm just I'm barely even looking. I'm just going to chuck it in his direction. Yeah. So, okay. So Glog sort of throws over his shoulder a a leather pouch with like a few sort of, like say sort of fairly sort of low value gems. I think they're like ten ten gold piece gems. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just take out the first gem, and toss the others to the floor, okay. um, and then I, I look at the brain and I start uh, mumbling this prayer, um, very sort of slowly, and I'm going to be casting trap soul. Nice. So, would you like to describe what effect that spell? Yeah. Has? So, what it does is it essentially traps a dying creature, the soul of a dying creature, within a gem. So, I'm attempting to extract Sanya out and into this gem, so that way we can just kill the brain and get him in your body if needs be or whatever. I love it. Do you have to make a, a roll for that at all? Yeah, unfortunately, I do because it's a spell. <laughs> so, are you saying you want him for his brain? <laughs> well, what about the brain? Because that's not his body. All right, uh, let's have a go then. Double ones, here we come. Oh, and, and la, 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 la. I, I'm literally not lying to you, look. Did you really? Double, Double ones. Oh, dang. You <laughs> Jeez. Great plans. Okay, mm -hmm. so what does it say if you get a, a six or below? Or is it just GM? Uh, it, it doesn't say what happens if, if I fail. I'm assuming it just doesn't work. You ever see that scene in Scanners where the head explodes? <laughs> No, um, no, it doesn't say anything about if it fails. Okay, so I'm going to say you start casting this spell, but as you're doing so, you think that Sanya's psyche must have like sort of retreated into like a sort of deeper part of the brain, obviously due to the damage that's been inflicted on it, and you're not mm. actually able to sort of like locate his psyche to like put it in the gem. Mm. Okay. You also think that's probably the reason why like Sanya's consciousness has stopped stops talking it's not a good sign and obviously he's slipping into some sort of like psychic trauma perhaps due to the damage that's been done to the brain perhaps just because of the stress of like being ripped out of his own body you're mm. not sure effectively he's going into a sort of psyche version of a coma which mm. probably means if he stays in the brain he's not long for this world a psychoma mm -hmm. okay so as you're doing that doesn't mean you can't attempt it again, but it's not worked this time. It's just going to take. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as that's occurring, the first couple of zombies reach this blockade that you've put across the exit, Glog, and they're sort of like clawing at this stone very slowly, sort of like pulling themselves over it, sort of trying to reach out for you. Right. So I want you to picture. So there's a doorway, and then I've got the stone to the side. So it makes it like a short hallway they got to come through. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy yeah, to let them come through, them. but they're going to have to kind of come through one. Right. Yep. They're sort of, they're sort of slowly um, making their way towards you. As soon as they get within range, I'm, I'm going to take a swing. But as a free action, I'd like to just sort of look at them and ballpark their numbers like do they truly seem endless or is there like 50 or okay you you would guesstimate that you can see at least sort of 20 but obviously they sort of snake out into the hallway and you can't really see if there's any more beyond in the sort of corridor beyond because you, you'd have to okay. like, poke your head out and look around all right so the tears of moog is singing okay well first of all i'm going to say that Corinth, if you wish, you can make a volley roll as they're approaching, like before Glog wades in, because you've got a missile weapon. Yes. Can I just confirm something with you, Jonah, as I do that? Hmm. Um, yeah, would you consider these... Are they, are they carrying any kind of weapon with them or anything like that, or are they just shambling? No, no he said... Shambling he said and clawing. No. Okay, so you would consider them defenseless, in a sense. I, I wouldn't say they're defenseless, because obviously okay. they can still attack with claws. Right, no problem. Just one of my moves uh, had that tag. Um, so what I'm going to do, how many is there of them? You can see 20 at the moment. <laughs> 20? <laughs> All in a line? Well, yeah, pretty much due to the fact that Glog's very handily like, blocked up the left-hand side of this uh, this corridor. They're having to sort of funnel almost in single file down this like sort of entryway to get to the chamber you're in. 
Okay, so one of the moves I have... One of the moves I have is called Blot Out the Sun, so I'm going to give that a shot. Um, I can choose up to as many targets as I see. As long as I've got the ammo, I can target them. I'm not going to do 20 all in one go. <laughs> but I'm going to fire, rapid fire, three shots. Okay, make those rolls then. So it's, it's one roll and hits all if, if I'm lucky enough. Yep, lovely. Oh, sweet! So that's 11 plus 3, 14. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So roll your damage. It's just a straight D8, isn't it? For but my bird's not about. Uh, it's four to three. Okay. So basically, as as a glag's like lifting his weapon up to strike, I'm just like whoosh, 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 straight okay, through. Yeah. So these three arrows like shoot, well, like, shoot down the corridor. They sink into like the first three of these zombie dwarfs. Now, these are shots that pretty much from your combat experience, Glog, you'd know that if they'd have hit a mortal man, they'd have, like, felled them in one. You can see they've, like, hit the heart and, like, vital areas. One's got an arrow sticking out of its forehead. However, being in the obviously zombified state they are, although it is obviously causing damage to them, they're still slowly sort of shambling forward. All right, so I will... Um, educate myself on that information and I will make my attacks less thrusting and more slashing to try and hack pieces off. Okay, so just before you make your attack I'm going to ask, in terms of like in Snowcrest, where you come from what is the sort of like prevailing attitude of your people towards the undead? Oh, that's that's, this is totally unholy, like there is no undead, you, you've lived your life you died gloriously, to come back is to almost like put shame upon your the life you had right it's not something that any any barbarian would desire it would be considered something like a, a hag would do as a curse to you okay that's absolutely great so make me a defy danger roll with your strength to do your attack sure they're yeah trying, they're trying to claw at you while you're trying to hack them. oh i see i thought it was i thought it was i roll a hack and slash well no hack and, hack and slash would normally be like a sort of the, a straightforward attack when you're when you're not in any immediate danger, but since they're quite close in and they're trying oh, to grab. I it, see. Then... Okay. Okay. I get. It. I'm just trying to. Show... So I get a, a. What do I add to that? I get a ten on the dice. Oh, thirteen then. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So in effect, that that now works like a normal hack and slash. So you get to roll your damage. Oh, sweet. I'm all about the damage. Uh, three plus five. Don't forget, you get extra damage from the Tears of Moog against Undead. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. What extra damage? It's a D6, I think. That's correct. I know. Wow, I do. I can do huge damage. I can do more than 20 in a round, potentially. Uh, so I got seven seven damage then. Okay, so... And again, I'm, I'm going to be slashing in a sideways motion to try and hack off arms or legs or... You know, uh, okay, cripple. so describe how you dispatch the first of these zombies as it reaches you. Okay, so exact. I'm kind of going for crotch height. I, I see his arrows come over me, and I'm used to working uh, with tribe as a fight. And I was aware of like where he positioned. I was you know situationally battle aware mm -hmm. of where the archer was. And so it didn't totally surprise me when the arrows come flying over. Appreciated his skill, though. I'm starting to wonder how he's going to be useful to us. I'm starting to know, rather. Um, and then, so doing that, the first guy that comes at me, I go for a sideways crotch swing, and I just lop him right off at the legs, and he just kind of tumbles into three parts. Okay, and that's exactly what happens. As it's the one with the arrow through his head as he gets level with you. You deliver this vicious swipe, chopping him into three parts. And as his like upper torso falls to the ground, his head hits the floor, and it drives the arrow like through the back of his skull. The body like well, what's left of it sort of twitches on the ground for a few moments and then lies still. However, that does not seem to have deterred the other zombies that are still sort of... They, they don't even pay any heed, the zombies, of course, they don't. So as they're moving forward, Dirk here, you, you've not yet managed to get your spell to work. You can you can hear this combat going on. You can hear Glog like, laughing and sort of shouting as he's like, hacking these zombies up. As, as he does. Yeah, you can see Corinth like, looking a bit more focused, like firing these arrows off, like, take, mm. taking them down. Okay, so I'm going to actually head towards the brain itself, and yeah, obviously there's like chunks missing on it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the gem and actually try and insert it inside the brain, um, if I can. Not to kind of like puncture it or anything like that, but if there's any kind of cranny I can fit it into, I'll 
put it actually okay, yeah, that's fine. obviously normally i wouldn't allow you to make another roll of the spell but since you've changed the circumstances i'll let mm. you make another roll for the spell yeah cool that there's lots of holes on this brain handily that you can sort of slide a gem into i, okay, I love this visual fair. only in rpgs i slipped the gem into the brain it's awesome um yes that is a 10. Okay, so as you cast this spell, and basically you've got your hand like on this, sort of sunk into this hole in the brain, this like icker sort of lined hole of this brain holding on to mm. the gem. And as you cast this spell and you intone the syllables, you feel the gem grow warm in your clenched hand. Okay. I sort of reach out to Sanya in my thoughts and say, come to me, Sanya, where it is safe. Okay, you feel energy flowing to the gem, and as you sort of take your hand out and look at it, you can see that where the gem was fairly colourless before, it's now turned almost like a ruby red colour, and it's as though there's like a, a small ember inside it, casting like a little light from the interior of the gem. Okay, um, I then obviously put the gem very, very safe on my person somewhere, probably like in my in my chest area, that kind of thing, there's like a pocket or something like that. Um, and then I turn around and start heading towards the dwarves for death and glory. Okay, splendid. I'm going to jump back momentarily to, to to the Skyward battle. So, Milo, you're there with the the thinker on this dragon. He, he's pretty much sort of, seems to like almost have a great disdain for you as though there's like, he should, when you say, oh, I'm going to have to stop you. He's like, Psh, yeah, whatever. He obviously doesn't consider you like a credible threat. However, he's not actually moved to attack you yet, but there is still this like hissing blade of pure fire clenched in his right hand. What do you do? Uh, I was born a halfling. But as we both can see, I'm no longer a halfling. Still, I carry my people in me the same with you and i am the collected thoughts dreams and hopes of an entire race do not compare yourself to me small one i'm saying you used to be something else that you are not anymore but it's still resonance in you you still have obligation to that I have an obligation to see that the plans of the people who make up my being are carried out. And although I believe you and your cursed companions have destroyed too many of our conduits in order for us to conduct the complete ritual, there may still be enough power in the two greatest of the statues for me to continue my evolution into something greater than I am now. That's fine. I'm going to give you an offer. <clears throat> you can walk out of here with what constitute life in your case. You will give me the remains of my friend and I will fly off. Uh, you can uh, take the dragon. At which point and... he smiles and he says, Or. You see, he like, strokes his chin, this, this long, like, fiery red beard. I should let you know, John, that he's lying. Because... <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he, he look... In fact, I tell you what, make me a charisma roll to see, just see how convincing you are with this blatant like, bullshit you're trying to sell him. Well, he's lying in the sense that he's going to let him fly off. Oh, he, yeah, hopes yeah. He'll, he hopes he'll fly into the dragon, then he will kill the dragon. But that's a lie. Uh, charisma. That's a partial lie. I roll a six. That is not my forte. Okay, he, he looks at you and he says, I expect you are not being entirely honest with me, but nevertheless, I accept your bargain. And you see the, the flaming sword like dissipate out of his hand. He crouches down, placing his hand on the back of the dragon. You see Sanya's eyes roll back in his head. Then the body just like topples sideways and falls off the dragon and starts like spinning over and over as it plummets towards the ground. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? Okay. As that happens, the dragon just like carries on that <laughs> flying away. Okay, I'll use a barn, a hold, as we call it, mm -hmm. to summon an air elemental to catch his good friend Sanya. 
Okay, that's absolutely fine. So as Sanya's sort of plummeting towards the ground, sort of tumbling end over end, you can see from the way he's falling, the, there's, there's no sort of consciousness in the body. The, the limbs are just sort of flail out and he's spinning end over end. As he does so, this vortex of air appears to collect itself, sort of reaching up from the ground. And it almost sort of like cradles him and sort of grabs hold of him. You can see his like clothes whipping about as this vortex sort of slowly brings him down to the ground. It's good that he's not conscious for this. <laughs> <laughs> he throws up, it's all over him. You, you never get that sky buddy badge if he, if he was conscious while this is going on, man. <laughs> and then he's gonna he's gonna summon some icicles and stab the dragon in the neck. Okay, that is absolutely fine. So can you please make are you throwing the icicles or are you stabbing them? How are you doing that? No, I'm guessing it's just a way to explain that I will do my hack and slash damage. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. So it's going to be a defy danger, though, because obviously he's not just going to carry on flying while you like to try and stab him with icicles. So it's going to be a strength-based roll. Do you expect me to continue flying? Do I expect you to die? Yes, another XP for me. Whee! I fail. <laughs> at which point, can you, can you please roll me a d10? One. Okay, you take three points of damage. Okay. With or without arm, that doesn't matter. I don't have an arm, I know. It, from it, from it what, though? I just want to see it, the visual. It, it would normally be with. So as you're like trying to stab these icicles into the dragon, it turns around and it exhales this sort of gout of sort of burning ichor heating up the air. And as the air heats up, it sort of disperses your your wind-like form, if you see what I'm saying. No, Milo and this dragon don't have a good relationship. This is the same dragon we fought yeah, back Yeah, I, th I, right? I think it's fair to say you're, you're not on top of his Christmas list. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it sort of, t it basically, it doesn't stop flapping, it just like turns its head around and, and then like renews the beating of its wings, trying to put some distance between you and itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, plan B. I will hook onto it and create a whirlwind to make it crash. Oh, nice. Okay, so again, I'm going to say that's a, a sort of strength based defy damage roll because obviously you're trying to overpower it. Um, that is, that could be, that could be. Do I have a bonus? No, six again. Okay, mark yourself another XP and roll me a D10. No, this is not the time to be failing all those rules. Yeah, also XP is not really much use at the end of the campaign. No, so that is a seven. Okay, you take nine points of damage. Yeah. As basically the this thing lashes its tail sort of through your form. So again, dispersing parts of you into the actual air itself. You, you, you don't really feel, in your current form, you don't really feel the pain of the wounds as in like, oh shit, I've just been stabbed. You more sort of feel as though you're just sort of like getting lesser and it's becoming harder and harder for you to keep control over your, your sort of air elemental form. Yeah. Okay. I will uh, shred form, hope to land on the dragon as I do. Okay, make me a dex roll. Yeah, yeah, not XP. Okay, so you 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 shred your form. So, I gained a level. <laughs> yeah, ignoring some of the damage, <laughs> you you turn back to your harbour form. And you're just about to land on the scene when its tail flips up and like psh, catches you in your midriff. Doesn't cause you any damage, but also it flings you away from it, and you find yourself sort of sailing through the air. Ah, uh, so we're back at that. <laughs> As you start plummeting three. down, you can just see sort of like Sanya's unconscious body like lying far below you on the ground. Uh, well, Even for that elemental that saved him. You know, the best of the best of plans, they will fail when the dice come. Yeah. Uh, okay, Great so plans, I'm, shitty rolling. I'm, I'm going to jump back to the zombie match for a few moments. Okay. 
So these, these zombies are continuing to sort of stumble forward. Dirk heroes moved up behind Corinth and Glog. That they're still shambling forward. Corinth, what are you doing? Unmuting yourself first, I believe. Yep, I was just thinking that I'm not muting Alec. Um so he reaches for his his arrow, his quiver, and draws what he realizes to be his three remaining arrows. As it dawns on him that when he was caught in the wilderness outside his home, he he hadn't he hadn't much provision and he has not a chance to restock, so he has to make these arrows count. Seeing that the <laughs> these dwarfs do not appear to die like have the decency to die like a proper person does. What he's going to attempt to do is he's going to shoot individually this time, but what he's going to try and do is set up to help Galag dispatch them. So instead of, his aim is not to take them down, it's to pin them to the wall or hobble them in a way nice. to enable him to... <clears throat> okay, before you make the roll for that, can you also make me a, a wisdom roll? A wisdom roll? Sure, man. Um, so that's a 10, dead on. Okay, so obviously as you're looking through and you're, you're, you're very carefully observing these shambling zombies, you know, trying to work out their movements so you can pick your shot, etc., and make every arrow count. As you're sort of peering down, you notice what appears to be sort of stood right at the back of this, this current crop of zombies that are surging forward. There appears to be, you can't really make any details, but there appears to be like a sort of a shadowy figure stood behind them. And the reason you notice this is because the movements of this figure aren't the sort of shambling, jerky, uncoordinated movements of the zombie dwarves. They're very purposeful, almost lithe and graceful. Okay. Um, so what he's going to do, then, and that, when that becomes apparent, he's going to fire one of his remaining arrows at this creature to see if, if attacking, if disturbing this creature affects the movement of the rest of them. If there's someone in control, possibly. Like a pack master, like, like a wolf pack. Okay, make me a volley roll. Okay. Um, so that is unfortunately only a nine. Okay, that's fine. So you have done your damage, so roll that. Awesome. Uh, that's a single point of damage. <laughs> okay, that's fine. He takes it to the face. Still might test the experiment, though. Indeed. Yeah. However, you also have to pick one of the, co the following consequences because you've got a seven to nine. So right. you either have to move to get the shot, placing you in a danger of the GM's choice. You have to take what you can get, doing less damage, which obviously is not really an option because you've barely done any. Or you have to take several shots, reducing your ammo by one. Uh, all right, so I'll take the first option. So what basically, I sort of see this, this, this thing right at the back is sort of Glag's repositioning. So to avoid catching Glag in the shot, I sort of have to get up a lot closer and sort of come around him at the side to shoot, which puts me in danger. Okay, so what what you see, Glock, Corinth, and Dirk here, as he sort of like moves closer, getting in range of these zombie swipes, leaning round Glock, trying to get this shot, he fires this arrow. You guys sort of follow it with your vision as it heads arcs over the heads of the zombies towards this shadowy figure stood at the rear of their ranks. Then you spot like a gloved hand that sort of flashes up with with like inhuman speed and literally just sort of like knocks the arrow out of the air with what appears to be a small knife and you hear <laughs> a, a very familiar sort of but slightly echoing voice sort of comes from the back of this crowd and he says Dirk here Glog I remember when you used to have worthier companions and you recognise the voice of Rufus the White Raven Uh, what the hell is that? <laughs> Rufus? So... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's me. Well, your companion's not exactly worthy either. I look up a glag. Why are you soul. attacking us? We don't want you. We want what's in that chamber. What? That brain? Do with it what you want. Indeed, my master has bid me collect it for him. <laughs> or what's left of it. Your master? Indeed. Who is your master? 
at which point it doesn't, it doesn't say anything but as he's sort of step moving a bit forward you can see the light shining on him a little more you can see he's still got this very pallid complexion the white hair and the white eyes and these sort of needle sharp teeth he doesn't say anything but he holds up his hand and just like pulls the glove off and you can see this glowing green sigil on the back of his hand hmm which was uh, connected with Jasper as I recall I get that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> Glarg, being Glarg, um, and Corinth is now kind of in front. I'm going to hold my sword like this. I'm going to turn and just sprint toward the brain. And I'm like, yeah, stab! Okay. You're that, not fucking getting it. That, that's not a problem. I'm not even going to ask you to make a roll for that. There's nothing impeding your progress. I'm, I'm not like diving into it, like belly flapping. Into As you sort of dive up and you know, in that cinematic slow motion, you leap into the air and draw the sword back. You see, again, in, in that sort of cinematic slow motion, Rufus holds his like glowing green hand out and he's like, no. <laughs> and then you're like, into this brain, sort of grey ichor splashes up, covering the front of you as you're like... <laughs> you, Turning back, see how you like that? <laughs> you hear Rufus's voice, a sort of cold, cruel tone creeping into it, as that are all the emotions drained out of his voice. He says, you shouldn't have done that, Glog. I would have kept my word and let you all leave here alive. Kill them all. All right. All right. And as he said, no, like, these won't. zombies sort of like re renew their shambling towards you. Oh, right, yeah. I, I brandish my warhammer and charge forward. From Oog! Nice. M make yourself a defy danger strength roll as you shout, From Oog! And like leap over the, over the stone and like bring the hammer down. That's an 11. Okay. Roll your damage. Okay. Three. Okay, you see that the next zombie is another one of these where Corinth's already like put an arrow like through its chest. Describe how you finish it off with your mighty hammer swipe. Okay, so basically I've got my hammer up like this and charging forward, and as if I'm like batting it out of the park, I just whack it one on the head and it it knocks off its neck completely. Lovely, and that's what happens. Its head sort of smashes into the the wall next to it. Its body continues for like half a step, and then just falls at your feet. Okay, Corinth. Now you've had to get a little bit closer to to take your shot. So I'm going to ask you to make me a defy danger roll based on Dex, as one of these zombies is going to try and grab you and like pull you into the mass. The no problem. Dwarves. So that's uh, eight plus three, so that's eleven, John. Thank God. Okay, no problem. This this zombie actually manages to like grab hold of like the, sort of the hem of your cloak, effectively, and it's trying to pull you. But you brace yourself against this stone barricade that Glog has put up, and although it's got its like claws into your cloak, it can't pull you over it. You're sort of braced against it. Yeah, I'll take one of my remaining arrows and just try and skewer it. Okay, make a make a defy danger roll based on strength. Oh, interesting. So you're trying to stab it rather than shoot it. Uh, six. Okay, mark yourself an XP. Oh, good. Okay. Great. Then can you please roll me a D6? Can, if I must. Um, it's a four. Okay, you take four points of damage minus any armor that you're wearing. Good. Okay. As this thing sort of like pulls you closer, it doesn't manage to pull you fully over the barricade, but you're effectively like bent forward as it's pulled you forward and it clamps its jaws into your shoulder. You're almost pulled down by the weight of it, but you're just sort of still managing to keep yourself braced with one hand on this barricade. Okay, Glog, you've if you want to spend another round hacking up this brain, you can like entirely reduce it to a fine paste. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's no, I don't want him to get it. Okay, no I don't. It's not Rufus. It's Jasper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not not a problem. So for the rest of this round, you're effectively just like pureeing this brain. So at the end of this round, the brain is done. There, there is no brain anymore. It's just like a grey mulch. Okay, Durkey, you've seen that uh, Corinth is like getting dragged over this barricade, and as he's being sort of like dragged forward, like obviously more zombies are sort of climbing in. Think of that bit in World War Z where you see them all as almost one tide sort of swarming over. Mm. 
Okay. Um, so I'm going to um, smooth my uh, index and middle fingers over my Warhammer um, in order to cast Magic Weapon on it. Nice. Make your roll. I have to roll again, even though it's only a level one spell. Oh, I still did brilliantly. Uh, that's a 12, so I get an extra D4 to damage, and then essentially I run forward again. I'm going to try and just swipe um, okay. at any... Any dwarf that's near him. Okay, so you run forward. However, as Dirk is running forward with this now glowing hammer, can you please make me a strength roll, Rufus? So I don't know why I said Rufus there. Do you mean Corinth? That's what I mean. You, you mean you know okay, I was just confirming. I'm I'm tired. I've had half a can of strong, but I just roll with it. I got really worried there for a second. <laughs> that's eight again. Eight. Okay. You take a, another two points of damage as these zombies are clawing at you and they're slowly dragging you over the barricade. They've not managed to get you fully over it. But does armor apply in this case? Yes, it does. Okay, right. But, but basically, all it's only the sort of lower part of your legs that are still behind the barricade. Now the rest of you has been like dragged over it. Dirk here, as you run forward, you can see that basically through just sheer weight of numbers, they're slowly like dragging Corinth into this mass of dwarven zombies all sort of clawing and pouring at him. Hmm. Yep, so again, I'm going to rush forward, try and bat them back with my newly powered weapon. Okay, maybe a defy danger strength roll. Uh, not as good. That is a nine. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So roll your damage. Okay, that's a six in total. Okay, you take four wounds of damage, including mm. obviously minusing any armor you've got, as these so zombies are clawing one. at you as you're sort of getting in. But describe how you manage to finish off the one that's pulling Corinth over the barricade. Okay, so um, these things are pretty easy to hit with a warhammer. They're, they're pretty much just skin and bone, not much else. So yeah. um, I dent it a couple of times in the spine and just kick it off him. Okay, so Dirk here, like, smashes this zombie kicks it off you and is unable to like grab your shoulders and like haul you back behind this barricade current you're sort of pulled out of this mass of zombies are all like mm. it's like clawing and reaching out for you and you're like oh this might be it for the plucky ranger when suddenly <laughs> suddenly dirk here like grabs you by the shoulders and like heaves you back out of this mass, swarming mass of zombies okay i'm going to jump back to the the falling star that is Milo Thistle for a few moments, and all the cats, Indeed. friend to the animals. Um, as he's flying, uh, falling more through the air, he's not gonna, he's not panicking. He's been here before, more times that one really should be falling through the air, and he's looking up at the. Uh, at the dragon, flying away, trying to gauge if he, he could cut, catch up with it. If, then, if, if you can do something sort of fairly instantly, you might stand a chance, but if it takes you any longer than like a few moments, it's going to be well out of range. Because it's like it's flying like four ball like away from you as quickly as it can. Yeah. He's going to he's gonna let, the, let the chains take him over so his, his arms and his legs will be elongated and they will grow... Um, like this leathery hide on it, and he'll he'll shapeshift into a dragon of the same sort. Okay, make your shapeshift roll. Da, 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 seven. That is ten. We. Okay, so you're what, you succeeded. Your form twists, and there's like the sound of like bones snapping and sinew realigning itself as you transform into a similar sort of wormling white dragon. Can I just ask something when this happens? Yeah. Just out of curiosity. When when Milo shapeshifts, does the blue hair still still like make an appearance? No. No, his okay. blue eyes are always there. Okay. That's his I just, I was just imagining like a really metal dragon with massive plumes of blue hair. <laughs> yeah. That's like that's pretty sweet. Okay, so if you're trying to fly and catch this thing up, I'm gonna say it's gonna be a dex roll. You've pretty much got like one chance to catch it up or it'll be out of range. Okay, he's gonna do that. He's gonna try that because it's flying to his home. So the only thing he, the only place he knows was home. So yes, another XP for me. It's really my night. 
Okay. The the transformation bit being sort of quite extensive takes a, a little bit longer than you'd anticipated. And as you sort of look around with your new draconic form and your increased senses, you can see that like by now this the thinker in its draconic form is just like this tiny like speck in the distance. Yeah, he's gonna realize that he can't catch up with him, at least not within reasonable time and Sane is still down there so he will swoop around and uh, dive down and pick up Sane and go back to the rest of the party. Okay, you swoop down, you can see Sanya's is like, lying on his back unconscious, his eyes are open but they're just like staring sightlessly up into the sky. The lights are on but no one's home basically. Well, that's how we know it. So he'll just fl fly down, grab him with a claw, Yep. Beat the mighty wings and take off again. Okay, not a problem. You scoop up Sanya in your draconic claws and you begin flying back towards the ruined Underkin Temple. Speaking of which, the rest of you guys in the Underkin Temple, these zombies are still continuing to swarm forward. Glog, you finished off the brain. It's now just a fine paste. Okay, so I'm going to. First thing I want to do is I want to rush back into. Uh, protective position. I want to try and be closer to the zombies than my two companions. Mm -hmm. So they got to go through me. Now, Glarg isn't uh, smart about a lot of things, but he does understand combat. And so he knows that he can save a lot of energy by not having to do, do feints or watch for feints from them. And they're also, on top of that, they're slow. So he would see them as very predictable in combat. Mm -hmm. So simple foes where the real danger is their numbers. So what I'd like to do, I don't know if this is allowed by rules, is instead of, because I do tons of damage, is instead of focusing on damage, I just want to try and make a path through them to get to Rufus. Yep, that's not a problem. I'll say we'll do like a, a single hack and slash roll for that, which is obviously strength. If you succeed, you're not so much causing damage, but you've just like smashed your way through the group to, to open a channel yeah. to, to Rufus. Perfect. Uh, so I get 11. Yeah, no problem. Glog comes running back over, like vaults over this stone barricade and just starts sort of like hacking his way with his sword through the through the crowd. So like you see him like punch one out of the way with his fists, like kicking as well, just like storming his way through this crowd. You can see he's like just through sheer might of like swirling his sword around and like his physical presence. He's opened up a, a small path to Rufus, who's still this sort of shadowy figure stood there. You can see him a little bit more clearly at the moment. Okay. Corinth, you're now back behind the barricade. Obviously, Glog's just vaulted over and he's smashing his way, smashing a path through the zombies. What are you doing, Corinth? Um, Corinth will pick himself up slightly hesitantly as he, he, he saw his number was up there for a second, kind of looking at his wound. He turns to Dirk here and says, do, do all your old companions end up trying to kill you? No. I'm not sure why this has happened to Rufus. Maybe he's been tainted by death. It's only been two out of five. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not saying in details. I think we should we should follow your large friend. Yes. Splitting up is not a good idea with those numbers. Sanya is now safe. We need to get it back to his body. Yeah. So what um, Corinth's going to do, he's going to try and follow Glag at, at a reasonable pace. He's going to draw his short sword, and rather than trying to necessarily do damage to these creatures, he's going to try and swipe at them to like hobble them, like Achilles' heel or a tendon, just to slow them down as they pursue us. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Give I'm not going to say you have to make a roll for that. You can do that. Glog's already cleared a path, so yeah. you sort of charge through this path. You're not sure how long it's going to stay open for, but you, you charge through it behind Glog's, slicing at the the tendons of these zombies as you do you're rewarded as you see a couple of them fall to the ground they're still trying to crawl about but they're obviously much reduced in speed which given their speed wasn't exactly amazing to start with okay so Durke, you've seen glog smash this channel to rufus through the zombies corinth's rushed through after him slicing around with his short sword what are you doing um how many dwarves are left now well there were originally 20 you've killed three mm. of them so there's still just a three up front. Okay. Tons. Right. Okay. I'm going to charge forward again 
because there's so many, I'm thinking I should probably try and clear a path, and that way maybe we could nip out past them. It's risky, I know, but just a moment if I can try and separate them out and clear a path. Okay, make me a strength roll. Uh, nine. Okay, so you basically you run down the path that Glog's made, and then you start sort of smashing your own like side path. Obviously, planning to give you guys like an exit out of here. As you're as you're doing so, however, you you sort of turn around to shout back to the others like, "Oh, follow me, we can get out of here." And as you do, your eyes lock with Rufus, who's stood there, and you can see that his eyes, instead of being like the white that he'd had after his last brush with death. Then our sort of dull red colour, like freshly spilt blood. Can you please make me a charisma roll? Uh, <laughs> uh, I can try. I just realised what you're doing, John, and it amuses me greatly. <laughs> okay, that's a five. Is <laughs> my charisma shite? Okay, mark yourself an XP. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave this up to you how you role play it. But as you, as you look into the the blood red eyes of Rufus. It's almost like a sort of montage in your mind plays of like all the good times that you guys had together when you first set out on this adventure. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and for the purposes of the it's game, and unless Rufus attacks you directly, you will now regard him as a friend. I'm gonna leave it up to you. Um... you I'm gonna leave it up to you how you role play that. Okay. What I do is I sort of completely disregard that there's anything going on like around me i go up to him and i offer to sit down with him i get out a hip flask i also sort of offer it to him and say eh, for all time's sake as you're saying that he sort of places a hand on your shoulder and he he smiles at you and for a few moments he's got that sort of boyish like smile that you remember seeing on that like cheeky rogue that he that he he was first wearing on his face when you first met and he he puts his hand on your shoulder and he says why do, why don't we we leave here and find somewhere more comfortable we can sit down and talk about old times so uh, i'm sure i'm sure our our other friends can deal with this matter here i look back at them for a couple of seconds i go sure we're in a dingy room somewhere underground okay at which point he snaps his fingers and the the zombies sort of like start surging over Glog and Corinth trying to close this gap. They've not successfully entirely done it. To the rest of you guys, Glog and Corinth, as like Dirk is walked over to to Rufus and he's talking to him. There's an odd sort of like thick, sort of almost like drugged quality to to Dirk's voice as he's talking. The, the 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 voice is quite slurred and sort of a bit a bit glazed. I, I'm just a little confused. How did Dirkie get past me to Rufus when I was trying to fight a path to? He basically he basically ran down the path that you've made, then started like hacking a side path in the hope of getting to like okay. the exit. Okay. Okay. I just want to keep the mental picture. Yep. Okay. No problems. Okay, so you the path that you've made hasn't entirely been closed, but you can see these zombies are surging forward trying to close the gap. Well yeah, I am just trying to get to Rufus. I'm like trying whatever I gotta do to and, get okay, to Okay, yeah, make, make me a strength, a strength base anything. hack and slash roll to sure, close yeah. the distance. Ten, baby. Okay, not a problem. As, as Rufus has like put his hand on Dirky's shoulder and he's like turning around to like start walking out of this this flooded temple, you and the zombie starts. No, you forward. don't. <laughs> yeah, you pretty much scream at him and just like level the zombies that are in front of you. And you won't be going anywhere. You're tainted, Rufus. This has to end. You died twice. Okay, give it up. Move on. I, I, the life you had. As you, as you say that, he, he turns to... Rufus turns to you, Dirk, here, and he's like, Dirk, here, you're my friend. Be, be, be a good fellow and deal with this for me, would you? Okay. Um, I'm assuming that I am I feel fine to do that. I'm not sort of struggling. Make, make me a charisma mentally. roll. Because effectively, he's just asked you to do something against your nature. So that gives you a chance to resist the control. Yeah, very much against my nature. Um, okay, I think that's the same. Uh, yeah, still five. You can add any bonds that you have to Glog. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I do have a bond. Um, I wish to learn about 
to learn, learn more about Moog through a more devout worshipper, aka Glock. Okay, so what? So you've got a plus one because you've got one bond to him. What does that put you? Okay, scoring? so six. Okay, so you still get an XP. I'm going to say that you're not able to entirely resist his control, but because of that bond you've got, effectively you're sort of struggling against it. So rather than like throwing yourself into combat against Glog, you're like... Miss resist. Yeah, you, you can see Glog as Rufus says that. You can see that like Dirk is like struggling almost against himself. There's like beads of sweat like running down his face as he's like... Yeah, Glarg, this is more f tricks from like the thinker kind of guy getting into people's heads and stuff. It just makes him more angry, more want this creature to be dead. He doesn't really see this as Rufus, like the real the Rufus he did. This okay. is a perverted so, Rufus. So you're like just a few paces away from Rufus now. Dirk is not sort of posing any like threat to you because he's managing to like, hold himself in, although he can't really help. Corinth, you can see all of this going on. You can see Glogs obviously heading forward to get into combat with this this strange, sort of feral-looking creature that seems to know them from somewhere. What are you doing, Corinth? So Corinth doesn't really understand why, obviously, these people are fighting someone they called a friend. But he, from what he can tell is that Rufus is in charge of what's going on here, and he's putting everyone in danger. And he can see the Durkies acting most oddly. So what he's going to do, and he, as far as he can tell, the Rufus is not paying him any attention at all. That's, that's pretty so, much it. So what I'm going to do with one of my few remaining arrows is I'm going to do one of my starting moves, which is called a cold shot. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, what, what Corinth is going to do, he's going to jump on like the head of one of these like dwarfs as they're trying to get at him to try and get some lift off the ground. He's going to do like a wall flip, and just as he comes over Glag's shoulder, he's going to fire a cold shot aimed at Rufus's head. Okay, that sounds great to me. Make your attack roll. I really hope this is a good one. Uh, it's a nine. Okay, so it's you can nine. still roll your damage. Um, I don't think I can. Um, on, a, um, on a call shot, I... Oh, I do do my damage. Sorry, yeah, seven to nine. Uh, oh, yeah, so I don't do damage on a seven to nine on a called shot. But when I hit the head, they do nothing but stand and drill for a few moments. So he okay. essentially paralyzes him for a, few, for a few seconds. That is absolutely fine. So behind you, Glog, you yeah. see Corinth sort of leaps off, like jumping off the head of one of these zombies. And as he sort of like dives in behind you, he f draws and fires an arrow over your shoulder. It literally goes straight through Rufus's right eye and out of the back of his head. You see him sort of like stumble back a little bit, his hand raised to, to the wound. Perfect. That's what we like to call in sports as an assist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay. As this happens, Durkey, you feel his control just like, poof, it's gone. Glog, what are you doing? Oh. All right, so I'm just brushing past Durkia, and I'm going for a straight decapitation. Okay, well, he can't resist, so you don't have to even make a hack and slash roll for this round. You can just roll your damage. So, yeah, I, I come up and I plant both feet like, all right, so this is going to be sweet. D12 plus D4 plus D6. All right, so 11 and 3 and 1 is 15. Okay. You hack into Rufus, or what remains of Rufus, sort of cutting about halfway through his neck. However, you don't manage to sever his head entirely. Does he look like, how does he not look like the Rufus we do? He's, he's, he's very pale. His eyes are like entirely red. He has those like needle sharp teeth. Got it. Yeah, it as, as, he, as you sort of like do that, he basically staggers backwards, your blade sliding out of his neck, and he pulls the arrow out of his eye. You can actually see his eye still on the end of the arrow. He throws it Accept down. Accept it, Rufus. Death! Accept it already! You can just see there's like a red glow in his now empty right eye socket. I, I want to like stay on top of him like physically, you know yeah. what I mean? Like he, he, he hisses at you and you smell like a charnel stench of rotted and clotted blood on his breath. And he hisses at you, Death has no hold on me! Well, I just swung. I just took my turn, so... Okay, Durke, you can see this going on. Glog's, like, on top of him, like, sword at the ready. Rufus is, like, missing an eye. He's, like, half his neck severed. His head's, like, on at a strange angle. He hisses okay. out, death has no hold on me. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to go round to um, near um, Rivers' head, and um, like I'm sort of hammering a massive stake into the ground, I'm just going to simply bop him on the head. Yep, make a hack and slash wrong. Um, and beforehand say, I think you'll find death does have a hold on you. Nice. Oh, yes, that is a 13. Okay, roll your damage. Sweet. Uh, seven damage. Okay, that is absolutely fine. So, describe how you effectively like reduce his head to mush. Um, so, like I said, sort of, I almost ceremoniously bring the hammer over my head and just, and um, yeah, there is mush. Um, the sound sort of echoes around this room, and he obviously becomes lifeless and completely motionless. Indeed. As his body lies over the glog, like still on top of it, and your hammer like sunk into what remains of the head, it twitches for a few moments and lies still. Then from behind you, are a series of like dull thumps as like these dwarven zombies start just like falling to the ground, as though they were like marionettes with their strings cut. Then as you watch, the body starts to like decay really rapidly. The body of Rufus. Um, I would like to search his clothing, and not for valuables, but for something personal that would have identified him as the rufus we knew you know maybe like a white raven feather or something like that i believe i believe and i'm sure uh, matthew will correct me if i'm wrong but you did have a sort of white raven like token didn't you yeah i had a coin which had a it like um etched a, a raven onto yeah which was like a joke he used to go around giving it to people so you, to you, you find that glog you remember him like telling you when you were like camping one time that it's he used to like leave it at the scene of the crime as like you know the the raven has outsmarted you sort of thing. <laughs> as you're as you're right. taking this coin out of like his pocket, you notice that like a a sort of thick mist has started to rise from the the now sort of like ashen remains of his body. So Glarg feels that he did his old friend a favor. His friend was dead and he should have remained dead. So he feels that he's done him a favor. And so he's going to take this coin with the intent of giving it to Sanya when he sees him next. Nice. Okay, so as you guys are stood there, the, the zombies are dealt with. You're in no immediate danger. This thick mist drifts out of the body, and it slowly starts like drifting down the passageway towards the exit. Okay, so my intent is still to get uh, Sanya's soul back to his body, so I also... Start making my way out of this room and back onto the surface. Okay, not a problem. You start making your way back out to the surface. At this point, as you guys are all up making your way out, Milo, this is when you in draconic form, you start sort of heading over. The rest of you guys, you hear like a sort of crawling sound in the air. And as you look up, you can see this, this sort of small white wormling holding the body of Sanya Kelt in its claws, sort of like coming down to land. I, I go rushing over to it. Okay, Milo, you, you touch down. You see the no. dogs running over to you. They're all like covered in blood and bits of brain. Hey, in the landing, that isn't a crash. It's good. Mm -hmm. Careful, Glag. That thing may be uncontrollable without Sanya conscious. Beware. I have my sword at the ready. The dragon will land <clears throat> on... Uh, on three of its uh, legs, bars, mm -hmm. whatever you call it, and when it's a dragon, I hold the the body of Sanya up and put him down. Um, they can't speak, right? So I can't speak. Yeah. Do want to spend a whole? Okay, I'll spend a whole to shape shift into Milo while still maintaining the dragon. So it cracks and bubbles and turns into to Milo in his uh, in his naked halfling form. <laughs> it's good to see you again, little one. We need to go. Are you? He's heading towards the forest. Who? Uh, who? The thinker. The thinker. <sighs> Let us go then. And then. Where is Sanya? Uh, well, I'll pick up Sanya's body. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll, I'll uh, 
resume the shape of the, the white worm and then uh, kind of kneel down with the shoulder. Yeah, so and, uh, I'll, I'll put Sanya's body on first and then I'll climb on. Wait, Clark. I have I'm waiting. Sanya's soul. Surely we should put it back on his body. You have to bring it here. Yeah, you're like, oh, I've got Sanya's I don't soul. even question it anymore. Yeah, you, you feel like, I've got Sanya's soul, glow, glow. Well, the rest of you were yeah. distracted Typical by Tuesday. the dwarfs. How can a dwarf do that? I am not just a dwarf. I, I'm I don't know how anyone dwarf. can do it, but it doesn't matter. Milo said we have to hurry. By the power of Moog, I have his soul. And it must go back in his body. Yeah, so, yeah, I'll, I'll help him do it. I'll hold the mm. body. Okay. Yeah, I... I Obviously, I've never done this before, so Dirk just thinks, okay, I suppose I just hold the gem out very close to the body and just beckon him to go in. Okay, so <laughs> you... Put it up his butt. <laughs> oh, the soul suppository. It's a oh, kinky. Okay, so what, what happens is, as you as you hold this gem out towards saying, you notice as he's lying there, all his tattoos look like very dull, like, like there's no sort of vital force flowing through them. Previously, since your encounter with the strange ink like beast his tattoos have been on like perma glow setting but as you like hold the the gem out towards him the nearer you hold the gem like the, the brighter his tattoos start to glow but you can still see that like the souls inside the gem mm. um so I, I can release the soul from the gem at any time it just mm. simply says i can't recapture it so i hold it as close as i can almost like pressing it on his uh, on the body's chest and say sanya this is your body you belong in there go back to it Okay, so you press the gem to it, like where his heart would be, saying that. And as you do, the gemstone crumbles into powder, and it's as though the light from the gemstone flows into his body. His tattoos flicker, and then they like blaze out in this bright, sort of burning orange light. And he goes, <laughs> and that's where we're going to end this evening's session. Okay. We all board and take off. Indeed. Not a problem. Now, obviously, I know this has been a slightly shorter session, but since we're going into the sort of like the final showdown, I'd obviously like to do that with everyone there. That oh, makes sense. So it's like makes uh, sense. Game of Thrones shortening the seasons Indeed. and so on. That, that seemed like a good place to stop since effectively Sanya won't have been aware of what occurred this session because he was like in a tiny gem, whereas now mm. obviously he's woken up. So that, that seems like a, a good place to stop. But in terms of like boarding the the milo dragon and flying and everything yeah that's pretty much where we'll pick off next time that's absolutely fine so i'm just going to say thank you very much for playing the session guys obviously we'll sort out xp and everything in a moment but for now i'm just gonna say i hope you all enjoyed the session again thank you very much for playing i know it was a little bit short but i'm going to end the recording now